And here it is, look at that, full Windows running inside a Docker container. Or isn't it? Before we continue, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev, or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe, and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links and Docker files from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. What you can see here is running inside a Docker container and I'm connected to it using remote desktop connection and apparently it looks like Windows 11. It is actually something I covered a while back in a previous video. You see, if I for instance open the start menu, for Windows users, this should look very familiar. Up here you have your pinned apps, like for instance Microsoft Edge. Or the File Explorer, which is actually called Dolphin. Or maybe Notepad, which is called Kate. If I open Dolphin, again it looks familiar, especially the icons, but something is wrong. Probably you already know the answer, it's not Windows, it is Linux. Dolphin is a Linux file browser and this one is configured to look like the Windows Explorer. And for all the rest, let's see what we actually have. Info Center. It's called Windows Ubuntu 11. So this one is obviously a Linux Ubuntu distribution based on Ubuntu 22.04 and the goal of this distribution is to look as close as possible as Windows. So everything you see here is actually Linux except for the Microsoft WSL2 kernel, which is hopefully the only thing for Microsoft in here. As I mentioned, I already covered this one in a previous video and back then I showed you how I can install this one on a USB drive. So if you want to run a Windows lookalike on a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. In this video, I will show you how you can run this one inside a Docker container. Now unfortunately there is no ready to use docker image that you can just download and run. In case of Windows Ubuntu, we will need to create it from a running Linux distribution. That means that we need to download the ISO, install it in a virtual machine or on a USB drive as I did in the previous video, then boot into it, run it and archive the whole thing into a tar file. And then we can use this tar file as a base for the docker image. In this video, I will assume that you already installed Ubuntu, this one here. So this is the official site. And by the way, this is still running inside a Docker container, the whole Edge browser. So here, go to download free edition, download the ISO, here is the link. I already did all of that. So what I will do now, I will boot into Ubuntu and continue from there. So here we are inside Ubuntu and here, Open the console. Now as said, we need to archive the whole system and therefore run this command. So we want to make a tar file by the name ubuntu.tar. The name doesn't matter, you can call it however you want. We want to archive everything, so root or slash. And we want to exclude the proc folder, the sys folder and the file itself. And I also added one file system because I don't want to archive mounted drives. Everything else will be archived. Now you can execute this one and I already did that. Here is the created file. It has 4.8 gigabytes, so it's a bigger one. Now we are done here. Let's take this file and let's bring it to Windows. Back to Windows and here is the tar file. Now we will use this tar file as a base for the Docker image. And I already prepared a docker file. Now I will briefly go through the docker file and explain what it is doing. For the base I'm using Ubuntu 22.04, this particular release. The release doesn't matter, but it has to be Ubuntu 22.04. The code name is Jemmy. Then, on top of this base image, I'm extracting the Ubuntu archive. That's the one that we created previously, and this one has to be located inside the same folder as the docker file. Then, one very important thing, inside this archive is also the user from the installed distribution. So you should know the username and the password of this user. Now write them here, user equals username and pass equals password. Then we need to install a few things. 
we need to install XRDP for remote desktop connection and Tiger VNC, so you can also connect using VNC if you want. Then this section here fixes the Chromium browser and the Edge browser, because those two only work inside a Docker container if they are not sandboxed and if they are not hardware accelerated. Then, in order to run a desktop environment, we need to set some environment variables. The desktop environment used here is actually KDE. So we create a script called xstartup, and this one starts the KDE desktop. Then we configure VNC to use the same user and the same password. Then the next section configures RDP and VNC to use the same startup script. We are almost done. XRDP will run as a service and VNC we need to start manually. So this line here creates the VNC startup script. Then I'm exposing the port 3389, which is the standard RDP port, and 5902, which is the VNC port. And then I'm starting Dbus, systemd login D, XRDP, and VNC. I'm also starting the best shell, just so the container stays in the loop if something goes wrong. And that's it. Let's build the image. Go to Terminal, New Terminal. Make sure you're in the right folder. And I'll write docker build dash f, the name of the docker file. In my case, this is dockerfile.wubuntu. Then dash t, the name of the docker image. I called it docker dash wubuntu. And a dot for the current folder. And enter build. This can take some time. Perfect. Docker image is ready. And here it is inside the docker desktop. As you can see, it has almost 13 gigabytes, which makes sense because it is a full Linux distribution inside a Docker image. Now let's run this one. Go to Run, Optional Settings, and here we need to map the ports. So I want to map the localhost port 3389 to the container port 3389 and 5902 on localhost to 5902 on the container and run. The container is running, let's connect to it, remote desktop connection, localhost, and connect. I trust the container, and it's already working. This is now the XRDP login screen running inside the container. Here we need to log in with the same user and password that we set inside the Docker file, and OK, login. And here it is, Ubuntu running inside a Docker container. And I already have updates. I will skip those. Don't update yet. Let's see what we have. System settings. So they did an excellent job here. This really looks like Windows, devices, network, account, applications. Let's see apps and features. This one opens Discover, as you can see. So obviously, if you open submenus, at some point you will get a Linux application at the end, because at its core, it's Linux and not Windows. Now, a nice thing about this one, you can close the session, leave the Docker container running, and then connect again using remote desktop connection, and log in, and you get the session as you left it. Now let's try VNC. I will leave this one running and open tight VNC. This is my VNC client of choice. Then localhost, 5902 is the port, and connect. And the password. And now we are connected using VNC. As you can see, this is a different session. In fact, if I move this one to the left and RDP to the right, then it's clear that those two are different sessions, although I'm logged in on both with the same user. On VNC, it's the same thing. If you close the session and then try to log in again, you get the session as you left it. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. In a previous video, I also showed you how you can run Kali Linux inside a Docker container and display the whole desktop on Windows. And for Kali, we don't need to archive anything. So if you want to run Kali Linux inside a Docker container yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there 
or down in the description. And that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.